It's finally here. What's up guys and welcome back to Gabe Miller Music. Today I'm going to be showing you the process for trying out the new Novation Circuit Rhythm. Going to be unboxing it, trying out a bunch of the new features and making some beats from scratch. Two things I do want to quickly mention. First of all, Novation did send me a pre-release unit to try out, so thank you so much to them. Although I should mention that they didn't have any ability to dictate the content of this video in any way. And I released a revamped version of my $5 sample pack, adapted for the circuit rhythm, and it has a bunch of new sounds in it. So I'm gonna link a video at the end of this one that shows off a bunch of its capabilities. If you already bought the $5 sample pack, you already have access to this update. And if you wanna get that, the link is in the description. Thank you so much if you choose to get that. But for now, let's jump into it. All right, let's open this thing up. I've been incredibly excited for this for a long time. latest firmware we will get there and here it is I was kind of skeptical about uh, the gray design going in but I actually do like it translates a lot better on the physical unit and then of course it's got the super thin and sleek uh, build quality that we saw on the tracks as well and that we just got USB dongle get rid of this and of course here are the ins and outs Fairly similar to what's on the circuit tracks, but this can actually accept audio that you record into it. And I will be showing that in this video. A couple things to note right off the bat, these macro knobs are tailored for working with samples. And we've got some other features down here, which are kind of hard to see on camera, but uh, this is laid out very similarly, which is super nice. Like your sample is where your presets are, but then you've got controls like sample recording and uh, you can control how samples behave, including slicing, which I will also get into in a little bit. Uh, first of all, I'm going to double check that the firmware on this is up to date, and then we can dig into it. All right, I went through the process to update the firmware, make sure I had the factory pack loaded on properly. It was a little bit convoluted for me because I'm working with an early review unit, and I should mention there might be like some small bugs or differences that uh, Novation has already let me know that they're gonna iron out uh, with a day one firmware update. So this is pretty much the final version, but this is a pre-release unit and I wanna make that very clear. So I'm just gonna start a new project here. So instead of the two synth tracks and two MIDI tracks, we have eight monophonic sample tracks. Selecting samples is pretty similar to the way that it is on uh, the original and then we can sequence stuff in easily enough. And then we can lock those samples in if we want to. And if we go into sample mode, that's where this stuff shows up. So we've got things like reverse. Cool. And then let's try keyboard. Let me put that. Okay, so you toggle this on and off. I was looking over what the samples are in the factory pack. Eventually I'm gonna load my own stuff onto here, but like they got some decap samples in here. Like they're not playing around. I've always loved the circuit's distortion. So I wanna just get something recorded in. So I figured out to get to note, chromatic samples on the circuit. You love to see it. Let's get rid of that click. Cool, and we should still be able to sample flip if we want to. Let me try that just for kicks. And see if it still takes the pitch information. It does. Beautiful, that's very powerful. So let's... Let me just get something going here. So you can cram a lot on one track. This is very similar to sample flip on uh, the original circuit where you can't have more than one sample playing at one time on a track, but you can have uh, multiple samples that you switch between. So check this out. And then, 
I've locked these in, which is why they're purple. So let me just change that note. Save that. Like I'm not trying to make art here. I'm just trying to figure out the interface and uh, features. People have been suggesting for ages that there should be a way to quantize the tune by holding down shift. So by default, this goes in, I think, increments of 20 cents. And then if you hold down shift, it's stepped by half steps. Let's get something with some note repeating here, maybe. So let me go to gate, micro step. Like, I'm kind of wasting tracks, but I've got enough to where I can get away with it. It's nice to see some synth-like features in here. to 32 steps. Get some effects. A little loud, maybe. So a lot of this, super similar to the original circuit, which is great because that's exactly what I want. I want the super familiar workflow because I'm super fast with it. Here's our side chain. This is a little bit different. Okay, that controls how intense it is. Oh, and this probably con uh, controls the source. Cool, 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 cool. Not playing around with these factory samples, man. Oh, this is a good opportunity to try out the slicing. Sample mode, slice. Oh, so then note becomes a way to play your slices. And I'll try importing some custom stuff in a bit here. <laughs> the key's not the same in the slightest. I want to try a different sample, though. Let's get some... That was cut in this thing. Okay, so it looks like the samples are mono. That's unfortunate. This shows you what sample bank you're on, and it flashes, like, momentarily for uh, easier navigation. That's nice. Slice. So I have to figure out how to actually do this, but we will get there. That beats a bit of a mess, but you can probably see how powerful that is uh, and how Pretty seamless that is with something without a screen. I gotta figure out how to actually chop something from the ground up. I'm gonna get to that in a little bit, but first of all, let me just show you a couple other features that I already know are on here that are uh, very similar to the original circuit. So we got our note view. Uh, we've got velocity, so you can either have a uh, fixed velocity when you play, or you can uh, program in velocity on notes manually, just like on uh, both the original and the tracks. You've got uh, gate and micro step. Gate controls how long a note is held down if you have your uh, sample set to that. And of course, micro steps for like hi-hat ratchets. I've showed you that. Pattern settings. So you can control the speed of your patterns, which is especially nice if you want a note to ring out for a long period of time. And you've got probability in here, uh, taking a cue from Electron. Patterns, view lock. Uh, we've seen the mixer. We've also got grid effects. I haven't uh, gone into those yet. The 
vital sim sounds pretty good. And notice how they're color coded by type of effect. That is a welcome addition. I didn't think this was something I would want on the circuit, but uh, now that I'm trying it, I like it. I'm a fan. And uh, one thing that's really cool that I need to try is resampling because you can resample on this thing. So you can record what the circuit is doing back into itself. And that includes with these effects active. So if you want to have a track with permanent vinyl sim, for instance, you can do that. Next up, I want to test out one of the most anticipated features, sampling directly into the circuit rhythm. So we still have all of our sample slots. And I believe all these are full. So we're going to have to delete something. So I've gone ahead and deleted a sample that I probably won't use. So now, theoretically, we should be able to just record directly onto that sample. So this controls whether or not it takes threshold into account. So right now it does. So it'll be listening for sound, but it won't actually record anything until I hit a note. So check this out. Go to, what was it, five? Beautiful. So now that Micro Freak bass stab just lives in here. That's super nice. Uh, we can also take this a whole lot farther. Also, I should quickly mention that was super easy to do. And I'm not like saying any of this because Novation asked me to. They gave me literally no input on how to make this video. Uh, but I like low friction setups. I'm an impatient person and I like to just get ideas out of my head quickly. So something that's this immediate is pretty nice. Let's try out this chord idea. Check this out. Oh, that's as much sample space as it has. Okay, so we have run up against a bit of a limitation. And if you want to record long samples in, you're gonna need to prepare for it. So it's taking its sweet time to save that, that's fine. Um, so yeah, that was a bit long. Also, it normalizes it, so it's very loud. So let's clear that. Let me get something a little shorter. And then here's an idea. We can pitch this down an octave and it'll destroy it a little bit, but hopefully in a pleasing way. Here we go. It's enough to start with. Pitch that way down. Yeah. And then if I go into sample mode and hit slice. All right, so my understanding of the sidechain earlier was just a little bit sketchy. Now I've uh, fully figured it out and it's pretty straightforward. This is track one sidechain, track two sidechain, track three, track four, so on and so forth. So you get to set the intensity for each individual track and where the sidechain is coming from for each individual track. They're all truly independent, which is really neat. One more thing I want to try is resampling. So you can record the internal sounds of the circuit rhythm back into itself, which is pretty cool. So uh, to engage that, you hit the button over keyboard, resample. Also, I should mention, 
you can still record into it uh, normally and resample at the same time if you want to do that for some reason. I've cleared a bit of sample space, so now let's just give it a go. That ought to be enough. So now, here's our sample. And notice it did collapse it to mono. That's something you definitely want to be aware of, but it sounds fairly clean. If we want to take this way too far, we can chop up what we just did. So right now, these samples are not exactly what I want because it chopped them up evenly and there's that little bit of silence hanging off at the end. So I want to set my slice points manually and I don't want to endlessly have to tweak start and length to make that happen. So let's record those chop points in live. So I'm gonna go to expand and then I should be able to just like run through these. Let's go back to normal note. So nice. So now, and at this point, I could like vaporwaveify it if I want to. So, for some super preliminary first impressions, I like this thing a lot. And it was pretty much a guarantee that I was gonna like it a lot, but this really confirms it. It's super well laid out. I was able to pick up pretty much everything very quickly. And having this much control over samples and eight tracks on a circuit feels luxurious. Some of it feels a bit more like old school meets new school. Like it's kind of slightly more antiquated sampling tech packed into a really cutting edge interface. But honestly, once you get used to those limitations, it's fine. And I fully anticipate using this thing a ton and having it become one of my main music production devices. If you'd like to check out the capabilities of my $5 sample pack, you can click or tap up over here and be sure to subscribe because I've got a lot more circuit rhythm stuff on the way. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit.